Hey everybody, welcome back to the Flower Gold Wizard Channel. Today we have a couple of guests. We have Jeff with Jeff's Midwest Gold Adventures. And we have Ty with Iowa Gold Prospectors and their buddy Austin back there. Now I agreed to take them to my super secret spot because the spot we wanted to work today is currently under 22,000 feet of water. And in return, they decided to each give me an ounce of gold when we're done mining today. <laughs> yeah. And I thought that was pretty fair. So let's get our equipment up and running and see how fast it takes these guys to cough up an ounce. Now, if you guys watch my channel once in a while, you'll know that this spot here is Alpha Bravo. Me and Ryan, who should be here shortly, we hope, work this area extensively and there's still great gold to be had here. And I thought today that I would take a little meander downstream from where we've been working. As you can see, there's some pretty tasty deposits all the way down and through here. And we have worked a bunch of this too. But that doesn't mean there's not gold to be had. What we haven't worked extensively is this little offshoot right over here. It goes down and around that way in extremely high water. The, the flow is chewing away a lot of this stuff as well. Now it might not be worked down into lights and heavies as, as well as uh, the areas in the full main flow over there, but there's still some really good gold to be found in here. And I have found some good stuff down in there around these big boulders before. And I think what I wanna do today is focus my efforts more in this area under a lot of these leaves and whatnot because I've dug there before and there's lots and lots of really nice looking gravels, but I never did get down to the clay. So we're gonna see how deep we can get before we hit some clay, because that's where the gold's gonna be, down here. So let me rustle up some gear and we'll get to it. All right, first thing we're gonna have to do is get rid of a bunch of these leaves. There's lots of them. Yeah, he's such a good boy. He put us on the gold again, I bet. We're gonna find out shortly. Just wanted to show you exactly what we're digging here. Now you see on the side walls of this little pit I just dug, there's about three to four inches of black, I don't know, soil, I guess, forest debris. And then you get down below that and it's all gravels. Nice sized cobbles mixed with small gravels, etc. And that's the stuff that we want to work. Now I still haven't gotten down to the, to the gray or uh, uh, blue or any clay like that. So I'm going to widen this hole out here a little bit do a little bit of classifying i brought a small sluice along over there in my pack we're gonna set it up right over here somewhere probably right there that looks like an excellent spot for a small sluice like mine god darn it i could have brought my big one but anyway i think we're gonna be in business no matter what so we're gonna classify a pail up get my sluice up and running Ooh, doggy. Now, me and Rigby have a pail all classified up of that stuff right there. I didn't even do a test pan. Big mistake, potentially. But just since it's so darn easy to set up a sluice here, we had that pail classified in no time at all. And uh, basically, it would just be a matter of directing the current, the current here just a little bit this way because I don't want all that current going through here. So I'll just bunch the water up on this end a little bit, and voila. I have probably exactly the amount of water I want on there. So I'll go ahead and get a scoop of this buck right here. There's a few leaves stuck in there. That's no big deal. And off we go. I'll grab those leaves off of there. And there it goes. Now the guys are working upstream for me a little bit. So the water is going to be a little bit murky. It's going to be mighty, tell, hard, mighty hard to tell if we're getting gold in my riffles or not. So we'll just have to feed this whole bucket through there and do a cleanup. Off she goes. There's the boss. There he is. Uh-huh. Those guys up there keep damming up my damn dam. 
We're gonna take a little walk up here and see what all the hubbub is. Holy cows. Well, once you set up one dam, the water raises on one side and then comes through and we're good again. And I think they just set up another one. So here it comes again. It won't be long now. We'll have our, we'll have our flow back down there. It's already just about there. So those dang little gold hogs, you gotta have eight inches of pitch and two feet. <laughs> but yeah, he's got a sluice set up right there. He's got quite a nice little dam going. And I think there's, I'm assuming another one built up around the corner over here. Yep, Ty's getting one set up. He's got his Angus McKirk down in there. Or Austin, rather. <laughs> And Rigby's up here finding them guys some gold too. And there's definitely gold in this area. It's just a little spotty I always found up in here. The clay is really shallow and there's not much for gravels up on top of it, but who knows, maybe I just didn't spend enough time here. Once I get my own, we'll know. <laughs> if that's the case, I am moving back downstream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll see. I wanna show you guys just a little bit of a tip when it comes to water flow in your sluice system. All right, now my water has been going up and down and I've been getting no flow and too much flow and this and that just because of what's going on up there and that's just fine. But I, I wanted a way to be able to control it a little bit better. So when I get too much water, I can just move one rock, that one right there. Let me grab that and I'll throw it right in that hole. And if I get it on there just right, just like that, that stops the water flow from coming up and over that. And it balls up the water backs it up in there and it gives me a little bit more height i.e more water over my sluice and i think we got a little bit too much going through there right now so i'll just take that back out of there here comes the water again that'll drop the level of water on the flare of my sluice and down now like i said it's a little bit tough to see exactly what's going on there because the water's so darn murky but i've used this system Quite enough to know that I think we're we're in the hunt here, and I've just about got that pail gone. So once it is, we'll put this in a pan and see what's in it. All right, let's clean this baby up. Pick her up right into a pail, just like that. A couple of splashers. Little inspection. Looks pretty good. Get rid of those leaves. And there's a good amount of black sand in there. Very nice. Oh yeah, look at all that black sand in there. A lot of garnets too. All right, let's get this puppy cleaned up. Hopefully we got some, some giant nuggets in here. Well, for our first half a pail, it's not all that great. There's a bunch of really super tiny stuff in there. That's for sure. But it's not, I don't think, what we're looking for. And I, you know, there might be 30 in there, but that's, that's a pan in our really good spots. So I think we're going to, I don't know if we're going to stay in that same hole or maybe move left or right just a little bit. Come on, Rigby, put me on it here. What's going on around here? Well, you'll see that I did dig down quite a bit, basically right smack dab in the middle of this little offshoot creek here. Now it's starting to fill up with water. And I might've gotten it a foot and a half or two feet deep. But if you, as you move off to the sides, you can see that there are some clay deposits built into this bank here at a, you know, at a certain depth. It's like a little, a little boundary up and down there. So we might have to slide over or we may just end up going over here and working some of these gravels that I know have had really good gold in the past, but didn't get worked exactly the way they probably should have. What is this here? What is this over here? I'll tell you what that is. That right there is the Chris Lilly Rock of the Week. Look at that bad pony. Yellow, red, 
green. I think I see a touch of blue in there, maybe. Absolutely fantastic. Who's Chris Lilly? Well, he's this guy up in Canada who likes cool rocks and he likes to watch our channel. And every once in a while, when we find a cool rock like this, we mail it to him. Sometimes we don't. What are we going to do with this one? Ba -ba -ba -ba. I'm mailing it to you, buddy. It's been a while since I mailed you a nice cool rock. You're getting it. Awesome. I hope you like it. All right, where were we here? We we're going to come down in here and maybe work some of these gravels under some of these rocks right here. Now, if you get over here where the rocks aren't, <laughs> like right here, you can see that there are a number of pretty gal darn looking gravels over in here. You see that? I'll do a little digging into the side here and right down into the sticky, icky, mooky clay right here. Now, it's not so dense that gravel's not getting through it, but it is sticky and mooky enough that gold will stick to it coming around this inside bend right here. Going through all these rocks. This might be a good a good uh, experiment too. What the heck? And look who's here. Old Ryan decided to get out of bed. Yep. What is it, like three in the afternoon now? Yep. <laughs> yeah. And it looks like he's got a little something with him. Yeah. Y'all remember his little two inch sluice he had last time? Yeah, about a real, real sluice. Real man sluice. Real man sluice. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. In my pocket. Nope, you can't get that in your pocket. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get back to the grind. All right, let's get this here snuffered up. Just like that. I think we're going to change gears a little bit. We're going to do, do some test panning here and there. That's how you find it. Put Rigby on the hunt, and you test, test, test. Test pan number one. I'm going to go right down there on the on the high side of where the main flow is right here there's some really nice gravels right up on top of there and if i scrape them just like that i'm assuming that there's a layer of clay right underneath there and there is hardly anything for gravels in there so i'll go ahead and take another one of them right there if i can it's kind of difficult with one hand but that was actually a pretty good scrape right there get that one into a pan Take a look at it. Cobbles. And there's about 10 little teeny weeny, super, super duper teeny weeny, minus 10 trillion pieces in there. Nothing big yet, but I think we're gonna, I think we're gonna keep panning. I like panning. We did some sluicing. I like doing that. Got my Chris Lily rock right there. Got some friends along. I think we're just gonna enjoy our day panning around. Let's get after it. Well, I didn't find a whole lot underneath that those big boulders I pulled up out of the muck over there. Then I looked over here and I saw this tree that was downed and it lifted up a great big huge piece of forest with it. And underneath that are more of these boulders right here and a really interesting gravel deposit right here. And I'll show you this slab of, uh, looks like slate or something. Uh, it looks pretty interesting. We're gonna dig around that. Let me show you what it looks like. This piece right here. Now I caught the edge of it with my shovel trying to dig right over in this area and I, I noticed that it was lifting this whole gravel deposit up right here. So I'm going to take these gravels off of there. I'll probably just 
push them off right there. I'll be able to get at them, but I want to see how big this thing is right here. Oh yeah, look at that. Big old flat chunk right there. That might as well be as good as bedrock right there. Current coming down and around pushing new material and new gravel deposits over this baby. Nothing is getting through that. And uh, I'll take a, take a minute and I'll wash a lot of this stuff off and see if I can get it into my pan. But underneath that, let me put that over here. Yeah, there's really nice looking gravels in there. Oh, definitely. We might be onto something here. Let's get a couple pans of this stuff and see what's in it. You know, I was just about to go and fill myself up another big giant heaping pan full. And I remembered. I'm gonna have three ounces in my truck by the time we leave the, today, today. So I might as well have a snack. What do you think, Rigby? That's right, Rigby says it's snack time. What are we gonna to have today? Well, let's have a Bobo Lynx, 100% grass-fed beef sticks. <laughs> That's right, Rigby loves them. Rigby tested, Rigby approved. That's right. <laughs> Go ahead, pull. Okay, geez. That, that's mine, buddy. Sorry. Well, we might as well feed the crew as long as they're working so hard for that ounce for us. Here, have a chunk of jerky, Ty. Awesome. Thank you. Straight up from Iowa. That's right. That's good jerky right there. Whoa, he's already done with his beef stick. Uh, let's go see what the other guys on the crew are looking for a beef Any stick. Any you hardworking miners up here care for a chunk of jerky? Oh, yes, sir. Well, it is snack time. Go ahead, reach your mitt right on in there. Thank you. <laughs> That's good stuff. Ryan, you want yep. a piece of jerky? Yep. Yeah, you just got out of the yeah, bag. Yeah, you might as yeah. well have some yeah. breakfast. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know he wants another one. Let's see if Austin cares for a chunk. He's over here. He's a hardworking miner. He's grinding away. Thank you, sir. Hey, my pleasure. Get in there without giving you too much sand. That's all right. We'll wash it off with our gold. <laughs> all right, so let me get this straight. You had one Bobo Link, four pieces of jerky, and Ryan brings you another milk bone. I tell you. Oh. Oh, yeah. He's the best fed miner anyway. Jeez. Well, these guys only got 19 grams so far, and that's a far cry from three ounces. So I had to come up here, right in front of them, upstream just a hair. Hi, grader. <laughs> Hi, grader. <laughs> well, this is how you do it, right there. Here's a nice piece. It's got a shadow, and I can feel it. Can I get that sucker picked up? Let's see here. Uh, uh, come on, you get picked up. I got it. There it is. Oh, no, I can't see it, <laughs> but I picked it up. There it is. It's a picker. All right, now that's how you do it. Come up here, one pan, you get a picker. <laughs> so what I'm going to do now is take my classifier and bucket. I'm going to take a whole bunch of this material and classify it down before I pan it. That'll give me the opportunity to move through more material more faster. Oh yeah, look at that big old flake. That's big as my dang fingernail. Ooh, doggy. Now I'm surrounded. <laughs> How do you know if it's a picker or not? Well, if you can pick it up like that. That's a nice one. Good doink. Let's get back after it. Another nice pan. No pickers this time, but some really nice looking gold. Look at those. There's another one right there. I can push that right up. Nice pieces for sure. Way better than we were doing down there. Come on, another picker. There it is. Number three. Blam. That's a nice piece. And the good news is it identifies as a three gram nugget. Well, we're, we're getting the heck out of here. We were grinding all day long. Those guys back there were grinding for a week over at that other spot. Well, we got some nice gold today. Three confirmed pickers. One identifies as a three gram nugget. Can't beat that. So we're gonna jam some tunes, head back to the shop, check out the Fridge of Wonder. Back in a bit.
All right, slight change of plans. I've been meaning to stop at this property uh, owner's house for a while, and I, and I actually have, but there's never anybody there. But today they were, and they gave me permission to walk up and down this here creek whenever. And it looks pretty darn tasty, and we're only about a half a mile from Alpha Bravo, so I think there's going to be quite some good potential here. So let's take a walk down the creek and see if we can't find something. And I had to promise I wouldn't let Rigby chase his cows. You wouldn't do that, would you? All right, so as we're walking down here, I see the same exact type of rocks that I did over at Alpha Bravo. Now, a number of times I've driven past here, there wasn't any water, and there's no water right now. But behind me, and where the culvert goes across the road, there is a couple of nice puddles of water. Now, this might be somewhere where you'd have to grab a couple of couple of pails of this material dry and bring it somewhere to there's water but there's definitely potential here look at this coming down around here and there's a little sandbar right here and then it scoots off into what looks like broken off sedimentary bedrock right there and i'm walking on nothing but mud but i can see up there just a little bit we'll make our way up there quickly that there's some more uh, rounded deposits up here, rounded cobble deposits. And that's what we're going to be looking for, not this, uh, you know, this broken off sedimentary stuff right here. Right over here, look at that, how it switches right from that stuff there and starts mixing in with, with rounded river-worn gravels. Ooh-wee, look at that stuff. So I'm going to get a couple of test samples here i'm gonna go up there looks like there might be a big divot in the ground might be some water i can do a little bit of panning so i'm gonna grab a sample pan see what's in this stuff and bingo here we come we come from that way there and it comes down here and it's chewing away at this bank like crazy that being the outside bend and the current is going this way right here here's all the inside bend material right here super light silt and wash sand and it turns into slightly larger gravels right here and then everything over in a line right there is quite a bit larger and quite a bit heavier looking and then i'll come over here to this outside bank and i took a little chip out of there with my shovel and that there is clay 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 so this stuff right here is all sitting right on the clay now I don't want to, there's no water to be seen anywhere near me right now. So I don't, I'm only going to take the best of material because I got to quite a ways back that way to get to water. So let me fill up a pan of this stuff right in here, I think, right where the, the line of silt turns into gravels. I'm going to take a pan out of right there, head back to that culvert, pan it out. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. I got a little bit in my pan off the top. And then my very next shovel, I got down through there quite a ways. And look what, sitting on top of it, the, there's a nice clay layer. And this stuff is sitting right up on top of it. That stuff is absolutely rock hard. Absolutely stiff, rock hard, and impenetrable. Any gold, there's no gold getting through that stuff there. So I think I'm going to dump that out. Open this hole up just a little bit more. So I can get just that two inches or so on top of this stuff right here. Some of this stuff I'll just wash right off like that and then I'll throw that in my pan. Just like that. Kablamo. See? Alright, we made it. Made it to our little culvert here. It's just starting to rain a little bit. But that's the water. That's the only water other than a little bit over on the other side here. <laughs> There's just a just an inkling of water over in there. And there's some really nice looking deposits over in here too. And I've I grabbed a bucket out of here, which is in the truck, and we'll take a look at that back at the ranch. But uh, hello, this this whole area is looking fantastic. And Alpha Bravo is right over there in that woods that you can see through the these couple of trees here. So reason stands that we might be in for a surprise here. Let's get this one panned out. And the results. Well, we've got three pieces here. 
Right there, one, two, and three. Not the worst for a first time on a spot right here. Very first pan, that's actually mighty promising. So we're gonna get the heck out of here and get that other five gallon pail that we have collected home and see what's in it. And I need a brewski. All right, we made it back. I've got that larger sample right here. This large sample right here. About a five gallon pail from Mystery Super Secret Spot. We've got a bucket of water right here with a classifier. I'm gonna run that through my classifier, get it down into its own separate classifications. But first, we need a little something out of the... The Fridge of Wonder. That's right, we've got a whole bunch of new stickers on here. And I got one from Jeff's Midwest Gold Adventures today. I'll have to wrestle that up out of the truck and get it on there. Bam! And bam, TV magic, just like that. I've got that pail all classified down into some nice small material here. I have my prototype smooth water sluice head attached to my river, small river sluice right here. And I also have a couple of finished versions. Pretty handsome, huh? Those babies are gonna work real well. It's got a nice one inch fitting on the end there. That's the sleek, sexy model. And I have another prototype right here. They all work just fine. I already turned the water on on this one and it doesn't leak, it doesn't come out the back, nothing. So I'll turn on my speed controller right here. Get that baby cranked up. Out comes that smooth water. This is really gonna pay off at the beach having that thing, that's for sure. Make sure there's no bubbles and I don't see any. We're ready to roll. Grab my green scoop here and we'll get to scooping. A one, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. I'm sure this water is gonna get plenty good and dirty fast because that stuff was in some mud and it smells a little bit like cow poop. But that's just fine. We don't mind a little aroma here and there. <laughs> oh my God, I just love this thing. Absolutely love it. There's no left and right difference. It's just nice flat water, no spray, no bubbles. And I can hook it right up in my shop to any one of the sluices I want. I, I can't even describe how awesome this thing is. Absolutely fantastic. That baby is really gonna pay off. So let me run the rest of this stuff through there. See if we got any gold in our new spot. All right, it's all in there. Let's do a mat inspection. You guys see anything? Well, me either, but we can fix that real quick. I'll turn my water off and off. Grab this here pump, stick it in this here, fresh bucket of water, just like that. And we'll turn it back on, just like that. There we go, nice clean water. Now let's take a look at them. And I see a decent amount of black sand. They're fairly black all the way down here. And I don't have my glasses on. Well, let's get it in a pan because that's the real test. And the first thing I notice is lots and lots of teeny weeny little garnets like these right here. They're actually pretty darn good looking color. Real nice uh, translucent uh, properties to them. But there's plenty of them, that's for sure. I wonder if I can get that into three instead of mackerel. Yep, well, there they are. But there's lots and lots of them, and we have lots of black sand to go through. And the results. The results are absolutely fantastic, 100%. That was about three quarters of a five gallon pail of unclassified material. And the second spot, well, I the first spot I got with that five gallon pail and the second spot I went down the creek with a pan, but this is what I got out of that. There might, look at how small some of the gold is over on that right hand side right there. There might be a hundred pieces in this pan right here. And it was absolutely chock full of garnets. Unbelievable, that is, that is fantastic. That's beach type stuff right there maybe. And that machine right there, Got it. And here's the gold plus our snuffer dump for the day. 
including those giant monster, ginormous pieces right there. <laughs> uh, we did pretty darn good today. I mean, we didn't move a ton of material, but we sure tried enough spots. We got some really nice gold to boot. And we may have just landed on the next big thing. 100 pieces in a three-quarter, five-gallon pail of unclassified material. Hot dog. <laughs> That's exactly what we've been looking for the whole time. Rigby sniffed it out and put me right on it. We have the run of that place anytime we want to, as long as Rigby doesn't chase his cows. <laughs> so thank you guys for coming along. We sure had a blast. Until the next episode, like, share, subscribe. Please do leave a comment. It helps build our channel. Flower Gold Wizards, out. You can't be a three-gram nugget. You're just a flake. Mm -hmm.